All right, welcome back to Photoshop. So today we're gonna take a look at neural filters. For those of you who have never heard of Adobe Photoshop's neural filters, and if you've never seen them, what you would do is go up here to filter, and then we're gonna drop down right here and we see neural filters. We're just gonna go ahead and select that and neural filters are gonna come up. It's gonna bring up this little box. We have little featured filters, and so these are our two featured filters. And so right here we have skin smoothing and style transfer. Now, right here you can see there is a little cloud with a download arrow. And what this is saying is that you need to download this filter before you can use it. This one I've downloaded, this one I haven't downloaded. Then we can come in here and these are the beta filters. And so anything with the word beta next to it is a filter that you can use. These are ones that they hope to have and eventually will be working on. You can see once again, I have two beta filters that I haven't downloaded and I've left those so I can kind of show you how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. Now I've got a series of images that I've downloaded here and we're gonna use these images in the neural filters to see how they act. So give me a second, we're gonna go ahead and pop back over to Photoshop and we're gonna start this tutorial on Adobe Photoshop's Neural Filters 2021. All right, so the first image that I have here is of this landscape. And what we're gonna do is see how well it can colorize this landscape. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and hit Command U and just desaturate this whole image. And I am not gonna touch it. And then we are going to go right back up here. We're going to select Neural Filters. I'm gonna select on this. And you can see right here we have something called Colorize. I'm gonna turn on this little toggle switch and automatically Photoshop is gonna do its best at colorizing this image. One thing I have noticed that when it colorizes image, it doesn't do a huge variety of colors. It's usually one, two, or three colors. Now you can click on an area and tell it to make a color and they always seem to be sort of soft. So you kind of get sort of that vintage feel versus more of a traditional or realistic feel that you would see by colorization. Now, if we wanna add a color, I can click on this over here, and let's say that we wanna make the mountains this bluish color. We'll come up here and we'll just grab a blue. I think that looks good, I'll hit okay. And then I'm just gonna grab this and then click on where I want that to be. So you can see when I do that, it's sort of bleeding everywhere. It doesn't really analyze or know. You can control size and stuff in here about how things work. But truthfully, I've not found that this actually works very well. It lets you pick a color, but it doesn't let you pick like a color in a specific place very well. And notice that it colorized this area, but it didn't colorize this area. Um, we can also come in here and manually control colors and we can focus the color. So right here it says focus color. In my opinion, and one of my favorite features are, are you satisfied with the results? And so we can come in here and I can select no, and then I can fill out why I pick no. They can get some feedback and understand how to improve this filter. So colorize is right there. We're gonna go ahead and hit cancel. And let's go back over to photo mechanic and let's pick something a little bit different. So we're gonna go ahead and pick this image of this woman right here, and we're gonna launch this into Photoshop. And all I'm gonna do once again is remove that color. We're gonna hit okay. We're gonna go back up to neural filters. We'll pick that same filter and we'll see how this does with the person. So colorize, hit here. And once again, you notice you're getting much softer colors. It does a good job on the sky and the foreground. But notice what it does here. It actually almost gradates and changes the color from like a red to a weird color. It also did a pretty good job with the, a skin tone. It's a soft skin tone. In, in this image, it's actually worked better, in my opinion, than the landscape did. Now, it, it got green on the horse, which is a little bit weird. But right here, it kind of messed up. Could it be something I think I could suck out the color or blend them manually if I wanted to do that? But in this case, it's not horrible, but it's not great either. 
So the next one we'll take a look at is, is makeup transfer. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit cancel here and we will delete this image. And we'll go back over. Maybe we'll go back over here to photo mechanic and we're gonna pick the images. So I selected this image, this image, and this image. And we'll just hit command E and launch all three of those. All right, we have this image in. So I have this tight headshot of this woman here and we're gonna try to apply the makeup to her face. The way this works is you're gonna need to know which images you want. So we have these two images right here. That, those are gonna be our makeup. And the way this works is we go up here to filter, drop down once again to neural filters, select that. And then we're gonna go and click this little button here. And then we're gonna go to makeup transfer and click that little button. Right here, it's telling us to select an image. And the image that we want to select is the one with the makeup. And in this case, we're gonna select this image. You can see right here, it's picking it. Is this the image that we want? And then it's automatically applying the makeup to it. And the lipstick looks horrible. The eyeshadow, it's like one color on this. And on this side, it's a completely different color and it's splotchy and looks horrible. And doesn't look anything like this. It's supposed to be taking these colors and applying them and it's not even close. So let's hit cancel and try a different image. So once again, we're gonna go up to neural filters and makeup transfer, click the little button, pick the image. This time we're gonna do Bindi and we're gonna hit okay. Don't worry about the little dot there. We're just gonna ignore that if it does put it on it, but we're just gonna go ahead and hit okay. And you can see, wow, yeah, that's absolutely horrible. Now it does do it as a layer so we can kind of control and work on stuff so we can fix it. It's really changed her eyebrows. It actually almost took eyebrows from the one person. The lipstick has got this harsh edge to it and it missed it right here. Is it something that I get edit and adjust? Yeah, but it's uneven and it just doesn't look natural. Truthfully, I can do makeup in Photoshop a whole lot better and probably quicker then it would take me to fix everything done here in this neural engine. Not a big fan of that at all. All right, so I've changed my mind and I've decided to, we're gonna actually reuse this image right here. And I think it's gonna work good for this next filter. So we're gonna go up here to neural filters again. And in this case, we're gonna click on this again and we're gonna go up here to smart portrait and we're gonna turn that smart portrait button on. And it's going to, it makes a little box around the area where it's going to adjust. This is kind of weird because when you adjust this, it says right up here, it says this filter processes image data in the cloud. So I'm not sure why it processes in the cloud because it's really slow. I wish it did it on the computer. It must be like a feedback issue so they can see what they're doing back on Adobe site. That way they're gathering information would be my guess. But what this does is let you change the expressions on your subject. So if we want this to person to be more happy, I can click on that. We have to give it a little time because it has to do a whole bunch of stuff. And then it's eventually gonna come in here and change the shape of her face and make it look more like happiness or a smile. So you can see that changed it. It did screw this up here where it got this really bright and messed up that. It does make the person smile. It changed the shape of their face a little bit. Let's do the opposite. So we're gonna make this person look a little bit more sad or a little less happy. And you can see once again, it did it. Now right there, it kind of did something weird with the neck and it looks really odd and horrible where it changed the face good. It messed up the neck area. And we can turn that off if we don't like it. So if we wanted to do anger, we could come in here and make someone look more angry. Once again, it totally messed up that neck. Let's see, facial age. We'll go ahead and try to make this person look older. Yeah, it looks like it just made them fatter and it messed up this area and that looks really horrible. Now down here, it has some experimental retain unique details and feathering so you can change some of those things. But for right now, I'm just gonna be leaving it on its default settings. Now we can control the age, the gaze, the hair thickness, the head direction and all this stuff. It does what it says it's gonna do, but in every instance that I've basically used most of these, it doesn't work really that well. Truthfully, Liquify for shaping the face 
works a whole lot better. Now you can't really adjust someone's smile or angry, but you can open up eyes, close eyes, make things more even, make nose more parallel, make it bigger, smaller, control the lips and do stuff like that. Things that people would actually want. This seems to be more of a gimmicky option. Truthfully, I think a lot of these neural filters would be better off on just like a, an, a phone app. So if it was like the Photoshop phone app or some sort of gimmicky phone app where you could purposely manipulate somebody to kind of make them look better. It reminds me of the horrible face smoothing and, sh and face shaping that you see on a lot of phone apps that people tend to use. They don't look good. They don't look realistic. And they're just, just overdone. So the next one that we have here is what's called Super Zoom. And so right here is that little download button. And so to download it, you need to just go ahead and click that. And then over here, you can see it's downloading that file. Now, once it gets it, then we can use it. But I'm going to hit cancel because we need to reduce the size of this image. So we're going to come up here and go to image, image size. And we'll make this like 400 pixels. So it's small. All right. And then we're going to increase the size. So we're going to go to image, image size, and I'm going to switch this to preserve details. This is what you would really use to increase size. We're going to make this 2000 pixels. All right. Reduce this down. So what we can see is we've really reduced the quality. This looks pixelated artifacts. It just doesn't look good. So now we're going to come up here and go to neural filters and Click on that little thing and we're going to come down here to super zoom beta and click this on and enhance image details, um, remove JPEG artifacts. We'll do, we're not going to do any noise reduction, but we're going to go ahead and hit okay. And I'm going to zoom in. And so this is what it looks like now. That's what it looked like before. Now before so it didn't really do too much so let's do this again so we're going to go to neural filters we're going to turn on remove jpeg artifacts we're going to do some noise reduction and then we're going to do enhanced face details in this case so i think that is going to be key and then we're going to go ahead and hit okay so we have this as a new layer so we can see what it's done and I truthfully don't see any difference in this image to another. Maybe there's some little tiny minute thing that I'm not picking up, but once again, not finding this very beneficial. So the last thing we're going to take a look at, and we can use this little guy right here. So I will launch this over into Photoshop. And this is the one neural filter that I actually seem to like. And we're just going to hit command J because it, it, it works a little bit better like this. Um, for me to show you. So we're going to go to neural filter and the one that I actually do like, um, they do have a skin smoothing one. I don't use it. I don't think it works that well. The skin smoothing kind of works, but not well. I think high frequency separation is like a million times better. There's more into retouching than just skin smoothing. So this is important to know. It's shadows, it's lines, it's a whole bunch of stuff. And a lot of times it just needs to manually be tackled. So let's go down here and this one we're going to go depth aware haze. And, and this is like one of my favorite ones. I don't necessarily use it a lot, but what it does is it kind of recognizes what your subject is and then it adds haze in the back. We can also turn this on to add some warmth if we wanted to add some warmth. And we can also add brightness if we wanted to add some brightness and we can slide this and make it more hazy or less hazy. I'm going to go ahead and turn the haze off real quick. It's picking up the ears and this side of the head a little bit when I do this. So basically the feather isn't so good, but we can go ahead and output this as a new layer, just like this and hit okay. And then I could go into this new layer and fix that. So I could come in here and I could make a mask. And if it was doing it to a specific area that I didn't want, I could paint in that mask. So that would look like this. So I could click on the mask. It's a white. So Black is going to hide, so I'm going to hit letter D, flip that to the foreground color, and then we're just going to make this little guy real small. And basically, I can paint over this area right here, or just really over his whole little head. 
and any area that I'm doing this to, it's going to actually remove that haze from that face. So you do have control. It looks like it's getting a lot of it actually all over the body and removing haze from different items. So I can turn this on and off and we can see the difference between the two. So this is without haze, this is with haze. It does work pretty good. It's a pretty nice effect and it's really the only one that I might actually use. As far as I'm concerned, most of these neural filters are just kind of gimmicky tricks that I don't think many professionals are actually gonna use in Photoshop. Now, Photoshop is expensive. I don't think the average person's going to buy Photoshop because there's a long technical curve in learning how to use the program. And I don't think most people are gonna buy it just to use these simple little filters because a lot of these things you can already buy on the market on phones, these little apps. So I think right now, as far as the neural filters go, that if Photoshop had these just for like a Photoshop phone app, these little kitschy filters that people could test out and use, I think that's really the type of person that's gonna be using this type of stuff. Is there somebody out there that might be skinning in some old photos and they wanna colorize them? Yeah, but that's gonna be few and far between. Once again, how many of those people are actually gonna have Photoshop and spend the money for the program just to do that one simple task. I'm not so sure it's gonna be that many. So overall, not a big fan of the neural filters as of yet. Um, I'm sure they will get improved over time. And hopefully I think they'll add more filters that are actually gonna be more useful for a person who's actually using Photoshop versus somebody who uses these on a phone app. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.